No doubt you have heard people talk about a 95% confidence interval, or maybe in the news in the context of a crime rate, the newsreader refers to a margin of error around a particular statistic. In this video, we are gonna run through exactly what they are so you can feel confident using them and calculating them in your career. Let's jump right in with a high level definition of what a confidence interval actually is. So a confidence interval is made up of a lower and upper bound that surround the mean of a sample. Within these bounds, we have a level of confidence as to what the true mean of the population might be. As an example, this means that if we were interested in estimating the average height of all 160 million men in the United States, we might take a random sample of say 50 men. We could measure the heights of the men in that random sample. And let's say we get an average height of 176 centimeters. Now, based on that sample alone, are we confident enough to say that we believe the average height of all men in the USA, in other words, the mean of the full population is 176 centimeters? Probably not, right? We know our sample won't be perfectly representative of everyone, so it might be more appropriate for us to say that based on our sample, we believe the average height of all men in the USA is somewhere between 172 and 180 centimeters. But how do we do this? How do we find that upper or lower bound that will surround the mean and what dictates how wide or how narrow this interval will be? These are all extremely good questions and in this video, we will figure them out, we'll break down the formula and we will put it all into action. To do that, let's revisit our random sample of 50 men that we will use to try and estimate the true mean height of all US men. So let's bring that sample together. There they are there. And now we have got them together. We get the tape measure out. We measure all 50 men and we get our sample mean equal to 176 centimeters. We go one step further and we calculate the sample standard deviation and that is equal to 14 centimeters. We also note down our sample size n of 50. So 50 men in our random sample. Now, in order to calculate the confidence interval around this mean of 176 centimeters, we use this formula here, which at first glance is a little intimidating. So let's break it down. We have CI. So what we're calculating here, the confidence interval is equal to our sample mean, which you can see is denoted by an X with a bar over it. That is the statistical notation for the mean of a sample, plus or minus. So in other words, we will end up with a number in this calculation and we will use that above and below the mean to get the bounds for our confidence interval. You'll see exactly what I mean very soon. So plus or minus this thing here, which is known as the margin of error. When we calculate the margin of error in our example, we are gonna get some value in centimeters, which we will add and subtract from our sample mean. Once we do this, we'll be able to say that we have some level of confidence that the population mean lies between value one and value two. The margin of error itself is made up of two parts. Firstly, Z, which is referring to the Z score, or in simpler terms, this is just the pre-specified level of confidence that we want. So do we wanna be 95% confident that the mean falls within our interval, or only 90%, or do we wanna be 99.99% confident? We have full control over this particular metric and we choose it ahead of time. When we put all of this into practice in a minute, you will see exactly what I mean. The second part of the margin of error is this here, known as the standard error. And you can see this is calculated by taking S, our sample's standard deviation, divided by the square root of N, our sample size. And this is quite interesting. Along with the Z score that we set, the standard error also determines how wide or how narrow our confidence interval will be. Think about it like this, as the number of data points in our sample or N goes up, we're dividing the standard deviation of the sample by a bigger number, meaning that when N is large, we get a narrower confidence interval. And when N is small, in other words, we have a small sample, the confidence interval becomes wider. And intuitively, this all makes sense. As our sample size increases, we have more confidence that the sample is likely to be a better representation of the full population. And when our sample is very small, we know that it could easily be less representative and we want to take that into account. The standard deviation of the sample, so S in our formula there, 
will also dictate the width of the confidence interval. As if the standard deviation of the sample is high, in other words, there is a lot of variation in the data, then this will also result in a wider confidence interval than if it were low. So that is what all of this means intuitively. Let's now put it into action on our example of adult male height in the USA. And remembering back to our samples statistics, we had a mean height for the 50 men of 176 centimeters, a standard deviation of 14 centimeters, and of course we had our sample size value n of 50. Let's head back to our formula and start plugging all of these in. So firstly, let's put in our sample mean of 176 centimeters. Let's also put in our sample standard deviation of 14 centimeters. And then let's put in the square root of our sample size. So the square root of 50, which you can see is 7.071. Nice one. Now, the last thing we need to enter is our Z score, or in other words, the level of confidence that we want. This confidence level can be anything we want, but commonly it is set to 95%. For this confidence level, we can quite easily get this online from a Z score lookup table. And here, like I mentioned, we are gonna use a 95% confidence level, which means a Z score of 1.96. So back to our formula, let's put that in as well. And with that, we have everything that we need. The first step now will be to calculate the standard error over on the right there. So 14 over 7.071, which is equal to 1.98. Now we have that, we can calculate the margin of error. So our Z score of 1.96 multiplied by the standard error of 1.98, which gives 3.88. And for complete clarity in our example here, this represents 3.88 centimeters. Our confidence interval formula tells us to add and subtract this value from our sample mean of 176 centimeters to get our upper and lower confidence interval bounds. So let's do it. 176 minus 3.88 equals 172.12. And 176 plus 3.88 equals 179.88. Amazing. And this means that we can now state that based on our sample, we are 95% confident that the mean height of US men falls between 172.12 centimeters and 179.88 centimeters. Now, as a challenge to you in Excel or Google Sheets or even Python, after you've watched this video to the end, go back and rerun our confidence interval calculation with A, a different level of confidence. In other words, put in a different Z score and see what happens to the resulting confidence interval. And B, make a change to the sample size. Perhaps instead of 50, change this to 500. Rerun the formula and again, see how this bigger sample changes the outcome. This is a fantastic way to really get to grips with this concept. Now, one last thing before we end, when calculating confidence intervals, there are essentially two scenarios we might be in. There is what we have done here, which is where we have a single sample of data, and based on this, we wanna calculate a confidence interval around the sample mean. So again, this is what we have just done. And then there is scenario B, where through sampling, we've created ourselves a distribution of sample means. So similar to what we saw in the last video on the central limit theorem. And with this, we wanna calculate a confidence interval around the mean sample mean. For scenario B, we essentially apply the same formula. You can see the one we've just used on screen, but since we're not really using a sample mean in this case, we instead use the mean of the sample means. Secondly, instead of the standard error being the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size, this is just the standard deviation of the sample means. So a subtle but very important difference to know if you're going to be sampling data and or using the central limit theorem. All right, so there you are. That is confidence intervals made easy. I hope it's given you some good insights into what they are and how they are calculated. In my career, I found that it is best practice to always support estimates with a confidence interval around them as this can provide the business, organization, or key stakeholder an idea of how likely it is they might observe results that are slightly different from the estimate itself. Creating the confidence interval, as we've seen, is actually quite a simple task, but it is one that can save you a lot of headaches trying to justify why some results are slightly different from expected. So trust me when I say that it is always worth throwing in a confidence interval. That's all for now. Make sure you go back and experiment with changing the Z score and the sample size as we discussed a moment ago. I guarantee that will make all of this sink in even more, and I will see you in the next video.